The rungs of the showbiz ladder should always include a game show, right? Sandy, which one? Bachelor number three. Number three, all right. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrities who were on game shows before they were famous. For this list, we're looking at famous people and their infamous appearances on game shows. These stints must have occurred before the celebrity became famous, or at least before they reached their pinnacle of fame. We're ranking our list by the entertainment value of each celebrity's appearance. He was your idol, but you've waited a lifetime to play with He's him. the best. Number 10, Paul Walker. I'm telling. Well, but in your opinion, who do you think looks better on stage today, you or Ashley? Myself. I'm Telling was a short-lived Saturday morning game show in which brother and sister teams competed for prizes. Ashley said... Food! She said you needed... <laughs> Junk food. Oh yeah, but that's not food food. The object of the game was to match answers with your sibling in response to embarrassing and entertaining questions, with the highest number of matches resulting in a win. Think the newlywed game only with siblings instead of spouses. She looking at nuts, I don't know, you tell me. The late Fast and Furious star was just 14 years old when he stepped onto the I'm Telling stage, playing with his younger sister Ashley. The duo did quite well, finishing in second place and each taking home a bike, a board game, and a Slurpee gift card. <laughs> you know, because you always make, you say like big things about it, too, you go like, yeah, so Alright, so he's gonna need more food and help with his homework, okay. Number 9. Vanna White. The price is right. When Vanna was invited to come on down, one of them read her t-shirt where it says, Get Serious. And he said, I am. I am. Vanna White's game show career had to be predestined. It's the only conclusion we can reach due to her fairy tale like journey. You're so busy looking at yourself on the monitor, you don't know what's going on. 650, 685, 75. What do you bid? 695. In 1980, White appeared on The Price is Right as one of the initial four contestants. She didn't make it to the showcase, but her picturesque beauty and bubbly personality made jaws drop. Some of those jaws happen to belong to some very important TV producers. Please, a uh, big welcome for our hostess uh, dressed in red. Here's Vanna White. Oh, Vanna! Just two years after her Price is Right appearance, White auditioned for the vacant hostess spot on Wheel of Fortune, beating out hundreds of applicants to be named the regular co-host in December 1982. She is the longest-running game show hostess in history and is the female icon of the industry. It's my touch. Look. See? Well, you try it. It won't work. Only I well, can do it. that's ridiculous. Of course it will. See? <laughs> Number 8. Kirstie Alley. Match Game. Some things are just impossible, like a drill sergeant asking Venus de Milo to blank. Salute. Match Game was a super popular show where contestants tried to match their answers with, well, let's say lubricated celebrity panelists. If you look over at our stars here, some of them you will see have glazed looks in their <laughs> eyes, and some have fairly intelligent looks. You would be better off to choose one who has an intelligent look. In a reversal of roles, Kirstie Alley appeared on the show in 1979 not as a celebrity, but as an unknown contestant. Introduced as an interior designer from Wichita, Kansas, Allie's appearance on Match Game came three years before her movie debut in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Lieutenant, are you wearing your hair differently? It's still regulation, Admiral. And eight years before Cheers made her a household name. I do know you're giving me a headache behind the eyes. It feels like a little insect boring into my brain. Paired with Jamie Lee Curtis, Betty White, and others, Kirstie had one of the best game show appearances of a pre-fame celebrity, winning both rounds and taking home $6,000. <laughs> Number 7. Billy Crystal. Various. Streams. Things that flow. Lost children. Things that wander. <laughs> Before becoming a world-renowned actor and comedian, Billy Crystal was a game show celebrity. Crystal frequented popular game shows during the 70s, making wisecracks and charming viewers, and became a known figure in the entertainment world. Oh, what a series. Have you been what audience? Did you watch Soap? Huh? Well, then you saw Billy Crystal. Billy, welcome to the Hollywood Square. Huh? 
This was at a time when everyone watched game shows. So viewers would follow Billy from one game to the next. I think that it might be Billy Crystal because... <laughs> <laughs> he made notable appearances on All Star Secrets, Hollywood Squares, and Pyramid. And proved to be as proficient at playing each game as he was charismatic. Notably, Crystal actually holds a $20,000 pyramid record for getting his partner to the top of the pyramid's winner's circle faster than anyone in the show's history. 26 seconds. Old flowers. Wilted things. <laughs> Number 6. Paul Rubens, The Gong Show. I pity the poor fool, don't eat my cereal. Paul Rubens may be best known as Pee Wee Herman, but before Pee Wee hit it big, Rubens was simply a no-name performer. During the 70s, Rubens studied with the renowned Groundlings Improv Troupe and entertained his way through the lower echelons of show business, playing nightclubs and short spots on TV shows. Ah, Mr. Stingray! Ah, ah. But the peaks of his early comedy career were his appearances on The Gong Show, the wacky variety show that hosted all kinds of bizarre acts. And few were weirder than Rubens. When you try one of us, you have to try the other. Watch the toes, we'll give you the top billing. One of these anti-comedy skits featured a duo called Suave and Debonair, which saw Rubens paired with John Paragon in a satirical nightclub setting. Another had Rubens in a dance group called Les Chat, which we'll let you try to decipher. Oh, good. Wow. Quatre. Number 5. Simon Cowell, Sale of the Century. He enjoys watching motor racing and is a keen go kart racer. Please welcome Simon Cowell. Hello, Simon. How are you doing? Sale of the Century was a long running hybrid game show, equal parts Price is Right and Jeopardy. In 1990, a young Simon Cowell made his TV debut on the show and he bore no resemblance to the tyrant judge of today. Don't worry about the child catcher over there. He just can't stop himself being nasty. Polite, well-mannered, and docile in character, Cowell competed with deft skill and sportsmanship, answering questions and winning random prizes like cooking utensils. Congratulations, Simon. Bring Italian style to your cooking skills with this set of kitchen tools, compliments of sale of the century. He won the game handily, but his integrity won in a much larger way. Not one rude remark was uttered by Cowell in what has to be the most subdued television appearance of his life. Simple choice, really. Do you want the golf bag? Do you want to come back? Five seconds to make up your mind. Then when the time starts, it starts now. Simon? I'll come back. Of course you'll come back. Put it right there. Number four, Ali Mars. Deal or no deal? I've sung a lot of songs. Made some bad rhymes. Ollie Mars first came to public attention in the sixth season of X Factor. Or did he? Two years prior to his X Factor redemption, Ollie appeared on the UK version of Deal or No Deal, and the show couldn't have gone worse. Ah! Oh no! Ah, quarter mill's gone. Every case he eliminated had larger and larger figures, and eventually, every substantial sum was off the board. Host Noel Edmonds described all our thoughts when he said, quote, This is the most appalling run of luck in the history of the game. It is a fact that you've just had the worst luck we've seen. Sorry, Ollie. Mars finished the game with only 10 pounds, which is one of the smallest totals in deal or no deal history. It's obvious his luck has since changed. I know you're no good, but you're stuck in my brain, and I wanna know. Number three, John Hamm, The Big Date. I'm going to Palm Springs. You should come with me. I don't know about that. Why would you deny yourself something you want? Long before John Hamm conjured the charm of Don Draper, he was just an uncomfortable 25 year old on a game show. John Hamm is next. He's 25 years old. He's a waiter. John Hamm, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, John. With a strange haircut and an even stranger expression, Ham disconcerted viewers as a contestant on The Big Date, a derivation of the dating game in which players compete for a date with a near-mythical beauty. And John is just all about anything fabulous for you, Mary. Ham's eye assault of The Bachelorette didn't earn him any favors. 
Neither did his creepy answers to the predictably trite questions. How about you, John? You're on a first date, marries the girl, you want to really impress her, how do you make her feel special? Well, start off with some fabulous food, a little fabulous conversation. Whether his actions came as a result of suggestions from the producers or his own personality is tough to say, although it was clear he was doomed on this show from his less than fabulous start. And what else fabulous, John? And it <laughs> with a fabulous foot massage for an evening of total fabulosity. <laughs> oh, very good, John. Number two, Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Dating Game. He's been selected Mr. World two times, Mr. Universe five times, Mr. Olympia four times. He is an actor, he's studying business at UCLA, and Graz, Austria was his birthplace. The Dating Game was the cornerstone of 70s game show culture and many pre- and post-fame celebrities were the objects of desire. Lady number one, I am a man and you're a woman. Now, where do we go from here? <laughs> well, um, I don't know. I like to swim. Let's go to the water first. Probably the most retrospectively famous person to grace the show was Arnold Schwarzenegger, who made an impressive appearance in 1973. I like to do pretty things for a woman. So think of how pretty you are and tell me some of the things you would like me to do for you. Oh, I'd like you to just come over and bring me flowers. Arnold had just tiptoed into the public consciousness thanks to his bodybuilding exploits. But this was years before his acting career made him a household name. So what are you doing here? Dinner for wolf. <laughs> it was on the dating game that mainstream American audiences got their first taste of his unique foreign charm. As the governor wooed the three contestants, one of whom was a Playboy bunny. Melody, if you would, say hi, please, to Arnold. In the end, he bypassed the bunny, electing to choose the least weird of the three spacey girls. All right. Well, Arnold, I'm certain an active fellow like yourself has a great appreciation for fine food. So we've arranged a date for you and Kay that will take you dining to one of the finest restaurants in famous Beverly Hills, California. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. He's from Corpus Christi, Texas. Finds relaxation in many outdoor sports. We're delighted to welcome to the dating game, Farrah Fawcett. The man who partnered George Burns in the film version of The Sunshine Boy... Boys. Queen's Fry. Um, <laughs> sorry, hang on. Just, yes, how are you? It, it, uh, I'm never going to... Matter. What? Walter Matter. All right, now, Joseph, I understand you like to sing and you like to act. Do you, like, sing around in the shower or in a choir or something? Um, yeah, a school and everything. School and everything. Course. And the shower, too. Well, yeah. welcome to the show. <laughs> Number one, Aaron Paul. The Price is Right. Aaron, you're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Aaron Paul might be the only successful actor to owe his career to meth. I want my money and my dope. Come on! Not literally, of course, but we wouldn't blame you if you thought his energetic demeanor during his pre fame Price is Right appearance gave that impression. You're the man, Bob! <laughs> oh, you're my man! Even Paul himself stated in an interview that he looked like he was on serious crack during the show, as the producers said they wanted energy. Paul went above and beyond the call of duty. The 20-year-old ingested six cans of Red Bull prior to shooting, and he exploded onto the stage when announced, running around, screaming, and even telling Bob Barker that he's his idol. Let's get him over here. <laughs> he failed to win, but the rest of us did when the video of Jesse Pinkman in a much more colorful light surfaced years later. It's all about accepting who you really are. I accept who I am. And who are you? I'm the bad guy. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite celebrity appearance on a game show? So, uh, and are you a writer now? What do you do? I do do a bit of writing, yeah. Uh, sort of mainly comedy and, and occasionally film scripts and stuff. For more Big Money, Big Money, No Whammy, No Whammy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Here are your very own water skis. Those are for you, Kay, and those are for you, Arnold.